okay, this is the station with the balance scale. Okay, station number one. We're going to have a coin right here. This is a nickel, and we're going to weigh it using our balance scale. Okay. So we're like thinking about weight. So I'll put the coin on that side, and then I'm going to start weighing it with gems. Now gems are non-standard units of weight, not like grams or ounces or anything like that. So I'm going to keep putting gems on and counting them as I see how much this coin will weigh so until it balances. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay. Notice that it's balanced a little bit at fifteen gems. Let's do sixteen, seventeen. Okay. That's good. Seventeen gems for that coin. So I have cleared my coin and gems, and I recorded on the handout that the weight of the coin with beads is 17 gems. Okay. Now I'm going to weigh a large paper clip. Place my paper clip in the bin, and I'm going to start putting in gems. The gems again are non-standard units of weight, so we just keep adding them until we get a balance. Okay, one at a time. Two. Three, four, five. Okay, so that paper clip is starting to weigh about five gems. And I'm going to go ahead and record that on my paper. Okay, five gems. Okay, now we have our balance scale uh, empty again and we're going to measure the weight of a flat. Now this is a flat base 10 block. Okay. And we're going to see how much that one weighs. This one's this is a lot more than the coin or the paper clip. And so we're going to put in bundles of gems. Okay. So I'm going to start with bundles of 50 gems. There's the first 50 and as you can see, it didn't do like anything. Uh, let's bundle another 50 and put that in there. So I'm going to put the second set of 50. And let's go ahead and see 50 more gems. Here's our third set of 50. Third set of 50 is a total of 150 gems in there. That one up. Okay, as you can see, there's nothing happening yet. Let's put in our fourth set of 50. Now, this is a total of 200 gems. Okay, still nothing yet. And we put them in by tens now, so 200 uh, gems. 210, 220, 230, 230, and we're going to put in the 240 now. As you can see, these gems now, we're starting to move our balance a little bit. Okay, so that's 238, 239, 240. So it looks like it's balanced almost. 241. 241 will do it. Okay, so putting that into our paper, we'll write the base 10 blocks with 241 gems, okay, as we have seen here. All right. Okay, now we have our weight set balanced again and empty. We're going to take our coin. And we're going to weigh it with standard units. Okay. So these standard units are grams. I'm going to coin in there. And grams uh, have a little box set of grams that I'm going to use. I'll show you the box set. 
these are grams here and do we have larger amounts we have the littlest box has one gram then the next box is two and it goes to ten and five and ten and then twenty and then the biggest one those are fifty grams okay. so we'll start with the little ones the coin isn't very heavy so let's we'll start with the two grams here okay so that didn't do very much let's take out our two grams and put in a five Okay. Oh, okay, so that's kind of teetering there. Let's go ahead and slow it down to balance it. Oops. Okay. See, so we got, oh, looks like the coin is pretty much five grams. I'm just going to write that on my, on my uh, paper. The coin is five grams. Mm, right there. Now we're going to weigh our paper clip with grams. So we'll take out our coin. Weigh our large paper clip here. Okay. And we'll start with the paper clip is lighter than the coin, so we'll start with like one gram and see how that goes. Look at that's actually balancing. And if you want to know how much a gram weighs, technically, grams, uh, the large paper clip is a good indicator. Well, my, there's a little bit of measurement error with my balance scale. So the balance of one, the weight of one paper clip is about a gram. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and weigh our large flat block. And it's heavier than the paper clip, so let me try and put in one of these 20s. Okay. Okay, 20 didn't do much to it. Let's put in a 10 to make it 30. Okay, 10 didn't do much to it either. Let's put in another 10 to make it 40. Okay. Another 10 to make it 50. And then 60. And 80. Oh, 80. Now that's what the weights do is that once I put in 80 grams, the whole scale was tipped. And so we can deduce that the weight of the flat block is between 70 and 80 grams. So we're going to go ahead and have 70 back in there. I'm going to put in 75. Okay, So that also tipped it, but not as much or as quickly. So it's going to be between 70 and 75. So I'll put 72. Okay, A little bit more than 72. Let's put 73. Now, looks like we're getting pretty much balanced. Slow down the shifting. And we'll go ahead and do 73 grams. So our paper is looking like this now. 73 grams. Okay, this is station number two. What we have here is a what we call a kitchen scale. Okay. You might see some things like this uh, kitchens uh, where you can or a, uh, maybe a diet scale where you can just weigh things and notice that when I press on it, test it out, the needle points a little bit to the right of zero. So kitchen scales like this have a little dial in the behind the display that you can turn the scale to get it on zero. Okay, so what you do with the kitchen scale is you put anything on top of it and it will weigh. Okay, this one is a box that weighs and zoom in here. Okay, you look at the, the dial here. And the box of game weighs one and one pound and then a, and then halfway between one and two pounds. Now this is a scale that is in ounces. 
Okay. So we gotta count the little marks in between in between them. Okay. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more so you can see the marks between them. And hopefully we'll focus here. Okay. You know, it's having a little bit of a hard time focusing, so let's back up a bit. Okay, let's try that. No, I think we had a good one before. Okay. And so, we have between one and two pounds. We have the one pound, and then there's a half. Now, in between these tick marks here, we have one, two, three, four to get to that medium sized tick mark, and then five, six, seven, eight to get to the tall tick mark. Okay, so halfway between one and two is eight marks, or eight spaces, I should say, uh, between the tick marks. You want to count the spaces and not the marks. And that means that another eight will give you half, the other halfway from one to two, and that means there's a total of 16 divisions between one and two. And so these are pounds, and there are 16 ounces in a pound. Okay, so our box, we just did a traditional, or just a, a generic uh, weighing for that box, one and a half pounds, one pounds, eight ounces. Okay. So we'll back up a little bit, and we're going to weigh some salt. Okay, I'm going to weigh a container of salt here. Oh yeah, and on my paper, I'm going to write down that the game box was one pound, eight ounces. One pound, eight ounces for the box. The container of salt is also kind of close to that. Let's check, check to see if it starts at zero. So it's a little bit off again. So let's go ahead and scoot that back a little bit. Okay. And then we'll do our container of salt. The container of salt, I'm going to zoom in on the, the what it says on the container itself. Then it says net weight or WT means weight, one pound, eight, 10 ounces. Okay. So here's our scale. We're going to zoom in on here and see how much how much it is. And I'm going to back up just a tad. So you can focus. Okay. Now we have, it's just almost to the three-fourths mark between one and two. Okay. So we have one pound, one and a half pounds, and it's right on the tick mark that's right before. So we have one, two, three. Three ounces past the halfway mark, so it's 11 ounces. Okay. Now this is the weight of one pound, 11 ounces. Okay. And the actual total weight of everything says one pound, 10 ounces. So there's a difference there in, in what the net weight says and then what the scale says. Okay. A difference of about one ounce. Now there might be some measurement error, but there's definitely more weight on this container of salt than there is than what it says on the package. Okay, and so net weight means uh, that there is uh, the salt itself is one pound ten ounces, mm, and not the container. Okay, so both the container and the salt together are about one pound eleven or twelve ounces, somewhere between there. And so when you look at the stores items that they're measured in weights, uh, it's net weight, which is the amount of the food, minus the amount of the container. Okay, so The next uh, part, so I wrote on my paper, one pound, 11 ounces. Okay, the next part says, um, that's 2C, I answered that question. 2D is weigh yourself on the bathroom scale. Okay, so in this, in this, uh, to the floor here and I've got a bathroom scale and if we were to do this in class you would all weigh yourselves on this bathroom scale and go ahead and zoom in and I'm going to weigh myself on the bathroom scale and focus on the numbers themselves okay so it's starting at zero okay and I'm going to step on the scale carefully and weigh myself Let's see more for the numbers here. Here we go. The number itself. OK. 
It looks like I'm right in the way. Okay, what I've done now is I've just taken the camera off the tripod and I'm going to just step on here. There we go. So I weigh 90 pounds. Is that right? Well, no, there's something funny about this scale. The scale is actually not in pounds, it's in kilograms. Okay, so I weigh 90 kilograms. And so with the 90, 90 kilograms, I'm going to, I don't have much of a sense for that because I work mostly with pounds. So I converted it to pounds. Okay, so we're going to do a conversion with a conversion factor. So I put 90 kilograms over 1, multiplied by 2.2 .2 pounds for 1 kilogram, gives me 198 pounds. The last question is, how could you use a bathroom scale to weigh a baby? Okay, and so some of you might already know the answer to this one, but for those who don't, that a lot of times people will weigh themselves, and then they'll take that measurement, and then they will weigh, then they will weigh themselves holding the baby. And that larger weight, subtract off their personal weight, will give you the weight of the baby. Okay, that's all for station number two. Here's station number three, the leader investigation. This is important because this leader investigation has test questions, both on test one and on the final. We're going to use a balance scale to weigh an empty cubic decimeter container. Okay. So if you recall, the metric system has a meter as its regular length. Okay. So we're going to talk about what a decimeter is and um, why, they use, why they cube that. So if you cube a meter, it's very large. So a meter is like three feet long. And if you cube that, you have like this unwieldy big cube that you can't really do much with. So what the French scientists did is that they took the next unit ten times smaller, which is the next unit down, and which is the decimeter, and they cube that. So here I have a cubic decimeter container. And this length right here is a decimeter. That's the height. The length and the width on the bottom are also a decimeter right here. So all of those dimensions are decimeters. So this is a decimeter cube container. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how much the water weighs to start out with to fill this up. So our goal is to get weight first, and then we'll talk about capacity. Okay. So we'll put our cubic decimeter on our container. And we'll get out our measurements here. See. So we'll put in a 50 grams. Uh, so that's, let's, uh, let's try another 50. Okay, that's a little bit too big. Okay. So let's go down. So it's between 50 and 100 grams. Let's get out our next uh, weight, 20. Yeah, we'll have a 20. So this is 70 grams. Seventy grams. It's a little bit more than that. Fifty and another twenty makes ninety grams. So it's a little bit more than that. So it's between ninety and hundred. So I can't put on a hundred. That will go. Let's go put on ninety-five. Here's ninety-five. Okay, so we're getting closer. Here's ninety-seven. Okay, ninety-seven might be a bit too big. So we're gonna go to ninety-six. There we go. Let's sell our balance. 96 grams. So we're going to write that on our container here. So our container weighs 96 grams. Next step is part C is to fill the decimeter, cubic decimeter container with water. Okay. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and weigh the container and the water together. So I'm going to take off all of my weights to the side. And we're going to fill it up with water. Now we want to be precise in these matters, so we're going to fill it up pretty far. So it's on the brim. Right about that much is good. Okay. And now we need to weigh that. So water is pretty heavy, so I'm going to go ahead and get out a bigger measurement set. We need something bigger than 50 grams. 
So this, this weight right here is a thousand grams. You guys can see that? A thousand grams. So we place that on here. And even, and even placing a thousand gram weight on there, one kilogram, or a thousand grams, is too big. Still, it still weighs more than that. But my guess is it's not going to be that much more. So here's a thousand fifty. Here's a thousand one hundred. Okay, so that started to tip it a little bit. 1,120. Well, that's too much. 1,100 and... Oh, wait, we're, we're actually kind of bouncing near near that with the 1,100. 105. Okay, we're going to do that. 1,105. So the weight of the water in the container is 1,105 grams. The weight of one cubic decimeter of water, which is the weight of the water minus the weight of the container, weight of the water and the container, minus the weight of the water, okay, is 1,105 1 grams. subtract 96 grams. Okay. And so using using our power of differences here, if I take 5 1,105 grams to get 1,100 grams from here, and I get 91 from here. So that I'm going to do the differences this way. 1,100 subtract 91. And then I'm going to subtract off um, my 90, so I have 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 90, minus 1 gram. If I subtract 90s from both sides, and so I get 1, 0, 0, 9 grams. Okay. So in order to figure out how much that is, I did 1,105 subtract 96 in my, with mental math. I took off 5 from each one, and I took off... 90 from each one, and then I have 1, 10, 1,010 1, grams minus 1 is 1,009 grams. Okay, so that's the weight of the water. Okay, so I'm going to put that in here. Okay. And so in the perfect world, that's probably just going to be 1,000 grams. The weight of the cubic decimeter of water would probably just be 1,000 grams. So one decimeter cubed of water weighs one kilogram. All right. So here's that part. Now what we want to do is we want to measure the water by putting it into a liter container and see how many liters that is. All right. And it just so happens that the weight of one decimeter cubed of water was set to be a thousand grams by our uh, French scientists, or one kilogram. So we want to keep things simple. Okay cubic decimeter of water, one kilogram. So here's my liter container, and notice that the, the top measure is up to a liter. I'm going to zoom in so you can see that. And I'm going to fill this up with water, and I'm going to try not to spill. The entire water of the container now been poured in, and they've measured that to be exactly one liter. Okay. So just to help you verify, this is the entire amount of water in that. I didn't see you, you guys didn't see me pour it in exactly. Okay, one liter. So the relationship between cubic decimeter and liquids is capacity is liter. So one liter, one cubic decimeter of water. One kilogram. Okay. That's it for station three. Okay, here's station number four. We have some measuring cups. Here is 
one of them and it says how many cups are in a pint so this is actually a two cup measurement and it says that two cups one pint is two cups okay. so we write that on our paper we want to fill the quart jar this is a quart jar we want to fill that with uh, pints of of water okay. so I'm going to take my pint cup Fill it. Okay, so I filled that up with two cups there. So there's one pint. And then I've been into a jar. And we're going to do that again. Fill this up with water till it gets to another pint or two more cups. Okay. And verify that's two cups there again. We're going to put that into our quart jar. Okay, quart jar, perfect. So we fill that our quart jar up with pints, and so how many pints are in a quart? Well, there's two. One quart equals two pints. And okay, we can verify that. Next, we're going to look up how many quarts are in a gallon. Well, there's four quarts in a gallon, so we won't do that with demonstration. So, and so I have this part, so this much so far on my sheet. Okay, how many cups are in a pint? There's two. How many pints are in a quart? There's two. And how many quarts are in a gallon? There are four. Next, we're going to fill the one cup uh, measurement with tablespoons of water. Okay. Here is my one cup measurement. Okay, so it says there, you can focus on there, one cup. I'm going to fill it up with tablespoons of water. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start drawing from my quart jar. So this already has a bunch of water in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. There's a little bit of measurement error and I spilled a little bit of water, but there are 16 tablespoons in one cup. Okay, so one cup is equal to 16 tablespoons. Okay, we're going to pour a cup of water into the graduated cylinder and find out how many milliliters is in one cup. So I'm going to take my cup here, fill it up more precisely, and I'm going to pour it into a graduated cylinder, which is one of these types of things. Okay. It's a thing that's used in science, you can measure things. So I got one big one. I'm going to dump it all in there. Okay, we're going to see how many milliliters that is. So there was a little bit of spillage, but we're going to zoom in here on our measurements, and you probably can't see it because they are. Oh, maybe we can. Hold still. Okay, it's been between 280. Okay, so we're going to try and read that. I'm going to try and read it a little bit closer, Turn off the screen. Okay, that's not 80. That's 30. So it's between 230 and 250. 
and we have 232.46, about 236 or 238 milliliters. Okay. So we're going to say about 238 milliliters. thing. So part E. So now part F. I'm going to go ahead and ask Siri what, what there is. How many milliliters are in a cup? It's 236.59 milliliters. Aha, uh -huh, so we were good. So Siri says 236.59 milliliters. Okay, we actually didn't do it too bad. We're going to fill this one cup now, part F. Fill one cup measurement four times with water and pour it into a liter container. If four cups equals one quart, then how much is greater, a liter or a quart? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just fill up my... I know that my jar has, um, has a good measure of a quart. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up my jar all the way again. Up to the brim. And taking my jar right here, let me go I'm going to dump it into my liter container okay so we're comparing how much a liter is to a quart hmm well according to that experiment looks like it's pretty much exactly a quart Let's see what we got here. Well, it's a little bit less than a quart. Okay, so the sorry, the liter is a little bit bigger than a quart. So there is a little bit um, more liquid in the liter, but they're really close. And it says to pour um, this is to pour that quart into the graduate cylinder to see how many milliliters less. Let's go ahead and yeah, find the difference between a liter and a quart by taking one liter of water and pouring it into two of the pint containers. Pour the rest into... So, as you can see, it's a little bit... the, the quart is less than the liter. And I'm going to zoom out here again. And we need to take this um, liter, so we're going to fill it up with all the way to the exact liter. Put it into the pints containers back into our quart jar. Okay, so I'm trying to measure out exactly a liter there. Okay. I'm going to pour it back into my quart jar and then I'm going to find the difference between a liter and a quart. Okay, so this is a quart jar up to the brim and... Okay, good. So I do have some water left in here. Okay. You guys can see that. See how good my experiment is? Oh, I spilled some of that. Okay, with this graduated cylinder we can see that there's about 35 milliliters difference. Okay. We'll actually ask Siri how many milliliters are in? So we'll ask Siri what. Uh, how many milliliters less is a quart than a liter? Here's what I found. Okay, yeah, here we go. How many milliliters are in a quart? It's 946.35 milliliters. Okay, so one one quart is 946.35 milliliters. Okay, and so the difference is um, from one quart and one um, liter is the difference between 946 and 1,000. What is 1,000 minus 946.35? The answer is 53.65. 
Okay, and we can see that the difference is 53 or 54 milliliters. Okay, so I did spill some on my transfer. Okay. So the last part of my my handout I will fill out with a liter is a thousand milliliters, and the difference between a liter and a quart is 54 milliliters. Okay. That's the end of station number four, and so we hope you enjoyed this part of the video. Okay, in this part of uh, section 1.3, we're going to review customary lengths, and we're going to do some uh, weight and capacity conversions. So in this first part, one foot is equal to 12 inches. One yard is equal to three feet. One yard is equal to 36 inches. One mile is equal to 5,280 feet. One mile is equal to 1,760 yards. One inch is equal to one twelfth of a foot. One inch is equal to one thirty sixth of a yard, based off of those conversions from before. One foot is one five thousand two hundred and eightieth of a mile. One yard is one seventeen sixtieth of a mile. One foot is equal to one third of a yard. Review of metric lengths. One meter is equal to one hundred centimeters. 2.25 meters is equal to how many centimeters? Well, we're going to do um, 2.25 over 1 times um, 1. Oh, actually, we're going to do it the shorter way. So in order to get from meters to centimeters, you multiply by 100. And we're going to do 225 centimeters. 0.4 meters, again, we're going to multiply by 100. So we're going to move this two places that way, just like we move that one two places that way. So it'll be 40 centimeters. Two places this way, meters to centimeters again, so it's 5 centimeters. 15 meters is equal to how many centimeters? Again, this one here, two places, 1,500 centimeters. One kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. Three kilometers is equal to 3,000 meters then. 0.5 kilometers is equal to 500 meters because I moved this decimal two places this way. Three places this way. One, two, three. 2.56 kilometers, again, one, two, three. It's 2560 meters. 0.04 kilometers, one, two, three, this way. It would be 40 meters. 500 centimeters is equal to uh, a half of a meter because there's a thousand or is there's a, oh, no, that's not right, yeah. Because there's 100 centimeters in a meter, so 500 centimeters is equal to 5 meters. 475 centimeters is equal to some readers. Well, to get the 5, we did two decimals that way, you divide by 100, so we'll do that with this one too. 4.75 meters. Same thing with this one, centimeters to meters, I divide by 100. So that's 0.25 meters. 25 centimeters, 0.25 meters. And 5 centimeters, same thing. decimal here, divide by 100, you get, let's divide by 100, just two places this way, and you get 0 0.05 centimeters, meters. All right, centimeters, meters again, divide by 100, so it's 12.5 centimeters, meters. Meters to kilometers, 1,000 meters equals one kilometer, 600 meters is going to equal, we'll divide here by 1,000, three places that way, 0.6 kilometers. 6,245 meters is equal to, divide by 1,000, 6.245 kilometers. One meter, divide by 1,000, 0 0.001 kilometers. And 0.4 meters, and then we divide by 1,000, is equal to 0 0.004. 0 0 0.004, there's three zeros there. U.S. customary weights. One pound is equal to 16 ounces. One ton is 2,000 pounds. Three tons will then be 2,000 times three, which is 6,000 pounds. A quarter ton is going to be a quarter of 2,000, which a half of 2,000 is 1,000, and a half of that is 500. So it's 500 pounds. One ounce is going to be equal to 1 16th of a pound. I'm going to try and use fractions with the U.S. customary and decimals with the metric. 
one pound is equal to one two thousandth of a ton. One hundred pounds okay, is equal to how many tons? Well, okay, so here I'm going to use a conversion factor over one times um, uh, two thousand pounds. Oops, well, that's helpful. Back that up a little bit here. Okay. 2,000 pounds. 100 pounds, 2,000 pounds for one ton. Okay, you simplify by canceling those. And what we have is we have 100 over 2,000 uh, tons. Okay, so those will simplify, those will simplify, and so it's 1 20th of a ton. Five thousand pounds. Okay, so we do the same thing. Five thousand pounds over one times one ton, because what we're getting to over two thousand pounds. Okay, the pounds will cancel, and what I have is I'm thinking about five thousand divided by two thousand tons. So all of these will cancel here, divide by the numerator divided by a thousand, and then when you do five halves, you get to do two and a half tons. Okay, so it's two and a half. Moving on here to metric weights. One kilogram is how many grams? Well, one kilogram is kilo, which means a thousand. Okay. So one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. Okay. We're going to do one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. Next is one metric ton. Now one metric ton is going to be 1,000 kilograms. Okay. We'll talk about more that more in chapter 9, but suffice it to say that one metric ton is a thousand kilograms. So five kilograms is equal to 5,000 grams because every kilogram is equal to one gram. And there's that there. Half of a kilogram, or 0.5 kilograms, is equal to a certain number of grams. So half of a kilogram, multiply this by 500 here, by 1,000, I mean. So that brings this one to 1, 2, 3, and we have 500 grams. So half of a kilogram is 500 grams. 3.5 metric tons uh, is going to be multiplying that by a thousand. One, two, three again. So it's 3,500 kilograms. One gram is equal to one one thousandth of a kilogram. But I'm not going to do a thousandth that way. I'm going to write thousandth this way. Okay. One kilogram is equal to a thousandth of a metric ton. 0 0.001. 250 kilograms is how many metric tons? Well, let's do your conversion factor. 250 kilograms over one times, uh, there's a uh, thousand kilograms for one metric ton. And then these will cancel here. So we have we're thinking about 250 over a thousand metric tons, and I think they abbreviate just the little t. Okay, so those will simplify there. 25 over 100 goes to one fourth. Okay, so we're going to do 0.25. Okay, so all we really had to do was to move our decimal to the to the left three places, okay, divide by 1,000. So 500 kilograms is, grams is equal to uh, 0.5 kilograms. Again, move it three places because there's 1,000 grams in, in a kilogram. And then move it over three places as well, 1.75 kilograms. Okay, so there's that picture. And we got to do the next one, there's one more here that we're thinking of to finish it up. U.S. customary capacity. 
It's customary. So one cup is equal to 16 ounces. Oops. One gallon is four quarts. One gallon uh, is equal to a certain number of cups. Hmm. Well, what we're going to have to do for that one, I'm going to do one gallon. So we're going to take it down here. So nine, one gallon over one is equal, uh, multiplying it by when you get down to cups. Okay. So we have quarts to gallons. Remember that four quarts. Oops, let's not do that. That won't cancel out the diagonals. Four quarts for one gallon. Cancel. And you get down to cups. There are two pints in a quart. Those will cancel. And then I'm going to do um, multiply that by another one. When you get to cups, and there's two cups in a pint. So all of those conversion factors you can string together. Notice that all of these uh, conversion factors cancel. And we have the multiplying the numerators and denominators. So we have 1 times 4 times 2 times 2. All of that, all the 1s in the denominators will go just to 1. And that's how many cups I have. So that's going to be equal to 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. Okay, so 1 gallon is equal to 16 cups. Pint, one pint is equal to two cups. One quart is equal to, let's see, one quart. Going down to pints, so there's two pints in a quart. And there is two cups in a pint. And so one quart is going to be equal to four cups. So I'll do that there. Showing some work is okay, just make sure you're right. One cup, we found out, was 16 tablespoons. One quart equals two pints. One tablespoon equals three teaspoons. So a lot of you know that already from cooking. So U.S. capacity, look at all of those types, quarts, gallons, cups. We're going to talk more about this in Chapter 9 as well. But metric capacity, one thing to measure liquids, one liter, equals 1,000 milliliters. So they have just two of the units of those. All right, the big takeaway from this lesson is in this number 11. The length of a meter is defined by 1 10 millionth of the distance from the equator to North Pole. Okay. A liter is defined amount as any liquid, the amount of liquid, In one cubic decimeter okay remember that we had that box that was a cubic decimeter we filled it up with water okay there is a one-to-one -one relationship one liter is equal to one cubic decimeter okay a kilogram is defined as the weight of one cubic decimeter of water they chose water because it's the most plentiful liquid on the planet so I'm going to do this in red down here. We have one decimeter, so that's number 11. One decimeter cubed is equal to one liter is and weighs, oops, and one liter of water, that's the important part. one kilogram, okay? One to one relationships here. One liter, one decimeter cubed, one kilogram.